So what's going on everyone? Welcome back to another video. I've taken a look at a lot of mini PCs from not so fast ones to very very fast ones. But today I want to be focusing on the not so fast ones. This is the Celeron N4020 mini PC. It'll run you about $90 I believe. This mini PC only has 4 gigs of RAM, 128 gigs of flash storage, and that's just how it comes. Non-upgradable RAM, and the flash storage is soldered. But you can add storage, but not upgrade that storage. So overall, it's a pretty low-end and cheap unit just for web browsing, documents, etc. But I got to thinking, with its low power draw of only 6 watts, wouldn't it make a great server? Whether you're trying to run a media server with all your files on it and stuff, or a game server. You know, I got to thinking about it. This thing only has two cores, so for a media server with files, it probably wouldn't be that great. But, something a little more lightweight, it would do just fine. So today, I'm going to be putting this mini PC up with the task of running a Minecraft server. To be more specific, I'm doing it on Minecraft Bedrock. That's the version I play on. Y'all can throw the shade and the hate in the comments, I know, whatever. But this is the N4020 mini PC. Two USB 3s in the front, USB-C, micro SD card for extra storage. Power in, or two video outs, one's a VGA. Wired network, or Ethernet, which we're probably going to want to use for the server. Two USB 2s, headphone jack. For the Minecraft server, storage isn't super important. If you're running a ton of mods, you absolutely need a very large hard drive. If you need that on this mini PC, already have the door removed on the bottom, you can just put a hard drive in there. I'm not going to be running a ton of mods or whatever, so I really don't need this, but this is a 500 gigabyte Seagate drive. So if you need tons of storage for tons of mods and resource packs and stuff like that, yeah, this is probably less than 50 bucks. To be fair, it's probably less than 50 bucks for one terabyte. This is only 500. And I would recommend doing an SSD, not a HDD, or a spinning disk drive. I'd recommend doing a solid state drive. Which brings me to the other part of this mini PC. I have the top loosened. Literally just take the top off. You just put a guitar pick in there and it comes off. No screws. Here is our flash storage, 128 gigabytes of flash storage, non-removable. Well, right here is a M.2 slot, so you can put an SSD right here. So in addition to being able to put an SSD or hard drive here, you can put another one on top of the SD card. So plenty of storage if you want to run resource packs or all sorts of files or just multitask or whatever. So because I'm going to use this as a server and it's going to be on 24-7, I'm debating just leaving the top off. I know that will make it more exposed, but there's really not a lot of airflow going on since it's a passively cooled system. There are these mesh grills on the side, so possibly I can stand it vertically like this and heat will just escape from the top. I think that might be the best bet. Drop a comment down below, but uh, that's probably what I'm going to end up doing and leave this on. Anyway, we have this pretty decently sized aluminum fin stack considering that this is a laptop processor. Typically the passively cooled laptop processors only get like a tiny scrap of metal. So the CPU and RAM are both underneath this heatsink, are four gigabytes of RAM. What surprised me is that a lot of these chips do not have thermal pads, but this random one does, and even the storage doesn't, but it doesn't go anywhere. I'm assuming this is some sort of capacitor and voltage regulation. Drop a comment if you guys know down below. And to show just how power efficient this thing is, I removed the heatsink, and I wanted to look at the thermal paste pattern. Yikes, is what I thought at first. But, no thermal paste, thermal pad. Strangely, there are no thermal pads on the RAM, which is actually making contact with this. But there is one on this random chip. I feel like the RAM and the storage you need it the most. I don't know, it's a little weird. But this is the system that you're working with for only $90, and let's button it back together and get to installing the right programs onto it to turn this thing into a Minecraft server. Alright, I went ahead and upgraded this mini PC from Windows 10 to Windows 11, which surprised me. I didn't think it would support it, but here we are. The first step is to get the software to turn this thing into a server. So, you know, you can just look up Minecraft Bedrock Server, and it'll just be, you know, the first link right here. Might take a minute to download, so just let it download. So find the zip file wherever you saved it. I just saved it and moved it to my desktop. 
and then you have to be sure to extract it. Alright, so here's our extracted file. It took a very long time, but just let it take its time. It's a two-core processor. So this is what is in the unzipped folder. There's all these different things from behavior packs and configuration and all that other stuff, but what we're after is just the exe file. So uh, immediately I'm getting errors saying that some .dll things are missing. So what I'm going to do is look up each of these individual files that are missing, try to manually install them, and go from there. So on Microsoft's website, they had this page here with uh, all of their C++ redistributables. I think that's what the computer's missing. So we're going to try that and give it another shot. All right, so that seems to have fixed it. So if you're having issues with the Bedrock server application not launching, I'll drop the link down below of the drivers that fix that. All right, so let's try this out to enable this feature. Let's see. The server is up and running. So now we're on my desktop here, and I'm just going to open up Minecraft and uh, see if we can join. For the purposes of this video, I'm going to just make it a LAN server, but you absolutely can set an IP address and such so that your friends from, you know, different internet connections, you know, you can all play together. So I put in the port here, and it still says locating, but under the friends tab, it shows a LAN game right here, so let's just click on it. Alright, so we are connected to the mini PC Minecraft server. So I'm not entirely sure if there's anything in here to check ping or whatever i'm not too sure we are in fact on the server i was trying to look for something just a bedrock level but so a little bit of lag and replacing blocks and stuff but really really minimal i see that's lagging a little bit but Let's just head over to the village and mess around a little bit. And yes, I do have this set up as a LAN network right now, meaning that people from other networks can't join, but I would be playing from my own network anyway. And so far, there's been no rubber banding or teleporting or lag of any kind. I mean, for $90, I'm impressed. Especially since it's a two-core processor. All right, so that was how you can set up a mini PC that's under $100 as a Minecraft server. I didn't show off too much in this video. I only really showed off, you know, playing on LAN and whatnot. But this video is more of could you do it than how to do it. Follow along if you want. But you very much can use a two-core Celeron mini PC to run a Minecraft server. No problem at all. I have a lot of higher and mini PCs that I've taken a look at, such as the Ryzen 5 and Ryzen 7 models. This is the main board of the A9 9400 model, which is also a cheap, low-tier budget mini PC, about $100. This one was a pretty good competitor because of its SSD support. It comes with an SSD that's the boot drive, unlike this one, where Windows installed on the flash doors that soldered to the board, and you can add a SSD. This one... I have the SSD out right now, but this one, Windows, runs off the SSD. Also, instead of the RAM being soldered, it comes with 8, but you can add more. This mini PC is stuck with 4, but I can take an entire 4 gigs right here, and just, bam, now we got 12. So this one actually really was a contender for me to try this out on, but it costs a little more than this one. Like, this is bottom here cheapest mini pc and i just wanted to see what the experience would be like if someone has you know the cheapest mini pc money can buy and also this one is actively cooled with a fan because the processor wattage and power is a little higher so i figured not only do you not want something that has noise but you want something that's low enough power to not make a dent on your electricity bill which this is like 15 watts or something but this is six. Very, very little. So if you guys want to 
see me set it up on a different board, like his A9 board or a Ryzen board in the future, drop a comment and let me know. This is just kind of experimental. But if you want to set up a Minecraft server for yourself and your friends to play on, this $90 mini PC, if you want a personal Minecraft server, it won't put any heat into your house, it won't make any noise, and it won't make a dent on your electricity bill. It's only $90. I didn't change a thing about it to test it. Because, I mean, you really can't. RAM soldered on, storage is soldered on. How it came in a random Minecraft server just fine. So I'll drop the link to this down below. This was a review unit from ages ago. But check out Wowie if you're interested in a cheap Minecraft server. Trying out a different recording setup today. So let me know, is it better? Is it worse? Is it the same? Everything's different. So uh, just let me know how everything looks and how everything sounds. So I hope you enjoyed the video. And I hope that you got some value out of it. Whether it be educational, informational, whatever. And if you made it this far, drop a like. It's the least you could do. And it helps me out. Throw a dog a bone. That's all from me. I'm out. Peace.